I was not born here, but I grew up here. I spent most of my life here. I moved here when I was eight. Uh, back in 1961, Hurricane Donna had just swept through and flooded everywhere, and we were fortunate enough to be on the tail end of that. So, grew up on Glen Ridge Way. Uh, the house is gone. There's a new house there, but uh, uh, went to Audubon Park Elementary School, Glen Ridge Junior High School at the time, and, uh, and then I was in the second graduating class at Trinity Prep. So. So I go way back. So uh, it's a great town. It's a great place to grow up, and it's a great place to raise kids too. I had two boys that I raised here, and uh, they had a great time. Sure, I'm an environmental consultant. I have my own little environmental consulting firm right up on Canton, New York. I've had it here for 28 years, and uh, have many employees come and go in that time. Uh, I was on uh, the Lakes and Waterways board and got the board to pass some pretty interesting legislation that cleaned up, was the start of cleaning up our lakes. Shoreline protection. We started the stormwater utility uh, in which a certain part of your uh, monthly utility bill goes to, to the lakes restoration, street sweeping and what have you. So early on I was involved with the city on the environmental perspective using my background to help the city move forward in that regard. That's right. There are. There are businesses who use the, uh, the, the dinky dock, and I see them launch in there all the time. But to me, there's no difference between the paddle boarders using the lakes than a, a, a running uh, store like Track Shack using our streets for ra road races. Same thing. And I, wrote, and I run, so I run in most of the road races, and I, so I don't see a big issue in that. I think it's great to have a diversity of businesses and people and using the lakes and in our parks and what have you so i'm not i'm not really uh, upset about that well from a strictly economic sense i think we have to diversify our tax base uh, a large majority of our ad valorem taxes comes from residential uh, taxpayers and i think that has to be diversified into a more development more commercial uh, i think there are areas in the city that are perfect for development i mean they have been for years uh, Aloma Avenue, past Lake Mott, 1792, Lee Road, Fairbanks Avenue, Orange Avenue, uh, Denning. I think they're perfectly, uh, perfect places for development, redevelopment, okay. increasing a tax basis. And of course, there's a big push now to redevelop Fairbanks Avenue. I hope it works. We have a new sewer line, but sewer lines don't make development. There are other things that need to happen because we've had sewer lines on Fairbanks Avenue between 1792 and Orange Avenue, and it really does need some work. So, uh, but we hope that the city will move forward over time, takes years, uh, for redevelopment to happen along Fairbanks Avenue. I think some of the big one of the biggest issue is is traffic. I live now off of Lakemont Avenue on on uh, Carolee Lane, and Lakemont Avenue is now bumper to bumper from close to lunchtime past rush hour. It's bumper to bumper, and I can and I'm pretty uh, uh, I can get pretty upset about that. Now there's a lot of thing people coming in from Orlando and Baldwin Park and going back and forth. But, but traffic generation, I think, is a big issue. Uh, when my wife and I drive down Park Avenue in the evening, just to have a nice drive down Park Avenue, it usually turns into a white knuckle drive of, come on, people, let's, it's, it, it's not a pleasant experience anymore. And I, and I think people are feeling that, you know, traffic is an issue whether it's 1792 Park Avenue Lakemont and so when you're redeveloping and putting more development in you're going to have more cars and so I think that's that's the biggest issue from my perspective well I think it's a little different I think there's a lot of construction going on in Winter Park right now just look at Rollins look at the Sunrail look at all kinds of things going on um, the new office building on Denning but I think we've always had construction going on. Uh, we've always been the center of, of companies that ha do construction business. We've had con concrete companies located here. We've had construction companies located here doing business here or doing business throughout Central Florida. 
Uh, but but I don't think there's a major you know redo of Winter Park going on. Just drive from Park Avenue out to I-4, and you'll see that it's it's developing like at a snail's pace. The same buildings were there when I was a kid. Um, and who knows how long it's going to take to, to change that. Now, we've had some redevelopment on the west side. I think it's positive redevelopment. But when, when I was on the commission, when we passed the CRA, that was 15 years ago, 20 years ago. That Those things take time. New England Avenue, all that redevelopment, that's 15 years in the making. So I don't think we've had this resurgence of development all of a sudden. I think some people perceive that, but I don't think so. I think we've had some turnover here. Obviously, we've had some turnover of shops and that type of thing on Park Avenue. We're, we're sitting in a, uh, underneath an awning of a, a beautiful building, I think, that was redeveloped. Uh, I, think it's a, it's, I think it's an addition to the north side of Park Avenue. I think Panera's is a great place to come. Unfortunately, a Panera would not be allowed now under the new ordinance, but hey, things change. Uh, and things change for a reason, and you just move along with it. Well, um, not too long ago, before redevelopment started to happen, we had the Watts Rooming House, we had the Big C Bar, we had lots of crack cocaine going on, lots of drugs, 50% of our police budget was, was designated to that area in Winter Park. Uh, and so it was a problem. Uh, and what I think the development has occurred up to this point, I think is very good. The, uh, New England Avenue, I think that's, I, I like the redevelopment there. I think it's a very positive thing. We've also had one of the most aggressive affordable housing programs in the state of Florida with the uh, Habitat for Humanity homes going up. That's a very aggressive program that keeps single family homes in that area. And so between the two of them, I think they work very good together. Now there's gonna be some who don't like change. They don't like, but you know what? Uh, um, change is a good thing because back in the day, Blacks were on that side of the tra tracks, and the whites were over on this side of the tracks. And I don't think anybody wants to go back to that. That's correct. That's right. And I, th I, think, that, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Um, over time, we, we'll see what happens. I think there's going to be more development pressure. Uh, but I, th I don't think the city is going to be rushing into rezoning residential zoning categories to commercial or office anytime soon. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think uh, I think people are, are very much into themselves and they're, they're not too sure what's going on outside their cars or their their house or their place of business. So most people are not involved, which is kind of a shame. The people who are involved, I think, are going to give it some thought, and I think careful thought on both sides. I get a lot of satisfaction on, on some of the outcomes that we come up with. Um, when I was on the commission, I got more satisfaction out of completing a sidewalk on a street that didn't have sidewalks as opposed to approving a development project because I because I think that's important and to this day uh, I'm I'm probably one of the few people in Winter Park who jog around Winter Park with my yellow tape and I identify street lights that are out and I've probably identified over 2,000 street lights in the last two years am I jogging around this is a voluntary thing nobody asked me to do it but I do it I just like to do it I like to give back and I like to to share my energy with with Winter Park. It's a great place. I think we needed some new uh, some new direction um, and some new thought processes. Jeff Briggs is a great planner. He was there before God created planners. Uh, he's been here a long time and he does a great job. We need some new 
perspective, I think, on things. You know, what, what's the what's the different perspective on things? And I think that's going to be very helpful. And I'm pretty optimistic of the future um, from the from what we're going to be offering our citizens in the future. Uh, from the standpoint of SunRail, uh, hospital redevelopment, I think is very exciting. Um, redevelopment, the, re the new restaurants coming in. It's a great place. It's a great place. Well, the cons, uh, I guess, would be uh, you know more people coming into Winter Park. Uh, from the standpoint of just having people here and buses and what have you, but the pros are that then you have you have customers, you have people who are going to shop, you're going to come here and visit, you're going to maybe hopefully get some more cars off the road. I think that's a good thing, and just the whole ambiance of having rail passenger service that we've had since 1885. People don't understand that when Plant put the railroad in, he was conned by the developers here whose names appear on all our street signs to bring the railroad in. If you look at a map of Winter Park, it's a big bowing into Winter Park, but there was a reason for that. You know, you bring passengers in, you bring people who are going to buy homes, live here, have have businesses. That's a good thing. So, so I think it's a good thing. Yeah, well the comp plan is a plan for the city and it's uh, spelled out by state statute. There's certain things that have to be in it, um, and there's certain things that are in our comp plan that probably shouldn't be there. That are more uh, uh, probably better to be put in the land development code. More specific on building dimensions, heights, size, what have you. Those types of things ought to be in the in, in the land development code, and the comp plan ought to reflect the vision, the the planning goals and objectives of the city. And then the land development code ought to be the implementing uh, way that we do that. Um, and so there are things in the comp plan that probably ought to be adjusted. Um, and I think that that will make a better plan. Now there's some folks who would like to put as many restrictions in that comp plan as possible. Uh, and I don't think that's where that needs to go. I think the restrictions ought to be in the land development code and what we do at, at the, the planning and zoning board and the city commission on specific projects. I don't have a problem with public input and I think we ought to have some workshops open to the public to come in and have the public tell us, tell the city what what really is on their mind, what they'd like to see, what they don't want to see, and build some type of consensus that way. But keeping in mind that that most of the citizenry do not show up. So it's going to be a vocal few who show up. So we have to keep that in perspective also. So therefore, the folks who are on the boards ought to uh, initiate and push through, push through what they think is important for a consensus ultimately by the City Commission. I think so. I went to the last one with my, my hound dogs and I loved it. It was great. <laughs> I, I think it'll survive. You know, come on, S Central Park survived since, you know, you know, for a hundred years or more. A couple of dogs, extra dogs aren't going to, especially if they keep them on Park Avenue. Now. Hey, it survives runners after runs and all the porta potties and all the booths and everything else. So, hey, try it.